Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Welcome to the Movers Mindset Podcast, where I talk with movement enthusiasts to find out who they are, what they do, and why they do it. My guest today is Alex Lukens. Welcome, Alex. How are you this morning, this afternoon? Even I don't know what time it is. Jesus. Doing great, Craig. Thanks for having me. Uh, we had a little discussion beforehand, and I was like, you know, I was seriously considering driving because we're not that far apart and like doing one of these in person, but I feel like it's probably a really busy time for the two of us, so let's just do this virtually. I'm, I'm spoiled now. Um, <laughs> we were talking initially about like different types of movement and things, and I'm super personally curious about journaling. And when I read that um, you've got some, I think, good thoughts around journaling, one of the ideas or questions that I always have is how does everybody else balance what they do with their journals? So, you know, one could journal as like a personal restorative hey, stuff in my brain needs to come out, go here. Nobody else ever sees it. Um, you could also journal as a way to organize your thoughts. You can journal as a way to plan. There's all these different ways you can do it. So um, how does journaling fit in for you? What are the things that you do with it? So, yeah, um, like we talked about, uh, being an entrepreneur to some degree, um, you have to wear a lot of hats in your practice. You have to um, stress out over a lot of different <laughs> things and different <laughs> And with different themes, different topics, right? So um, having a place where all of those things can come together and you can create some sort of organization around your thoughts um, to yeah. pick something to, um, to tackle and to uh, try to see if it can manifest in one way or another. Mm. Um, I journal, like I said, every single day. Um, I do it either for you know 30 seconds to write a thought I have down. Maybe I do it over a cup of coffee for an hour. Hmm. Um, I don't necessarily plan it out unless I have something that's really sticking out in my brain that I have to make sense of. Um, and I usually base it around a feeling, how I feel for the day. Um, it's very intuitive for me, in other words. Hmm. Do you find that the ideas that you have... Like, so I'm thinking about taking ideas, two directions, ideas that are in the journal that I want to take out to the real world and ideas. And I'm like, oh, you know, oops, I need to think about this more and write it down. Do you find that the flow is pretty even? You're getting as many things coming out of the journal into the real world as you are get, that you're like having to unload in, or do you feel like it, it ebbs and flows? Like I go through, I had this terrible week and all I did was like put things in the journal and I didn't take anything out to the real world. Or what are your thoughts on how that balances? That's interesting. So um, now that I, I never really thought about it until you mentioned it, actually. So um, it seems like what I do is I uh, unload everything. I put it down on paper in my phone or wherever I'm writing. And I just go out. Of, I go about my day. I don't try to bring anything from the journal and put it into my day mm. unless it's something that um, I want to rewire in my mind. Uh, for example, one thing I'm working on right now is when I wake up in the morning, I spend maybe like 10, 15 minutes just laying there, like a, half awake, half asleep, eyes still closed. I haven't like looked at a light or my phone or anything yet, and I'm kind of in that middle state. And I let whatever thought is coming into my head come into my head, and I just kind of watch it. And lately the past couple of months it's been um a lot of like anxiety type stuff and me comparing myself to this or me worrying about that or something that's upsetting me even before i get out of the, out of out of bed for the day <laughs> this exists only in my mind why is this pissing me <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> right so um i would notice how i felt when i got out of bed which was just disheveled and disorganized and clouded and brr and whatever, and nothing um, outside of that would really help resolve that. So um, that became a top a topic for my journal, which was like, how do you want to rewire that uh, state? How do you mm -hmm. want to like address it and uh, change it into something that's more actually productive rather than counterproductive? Um, and that maybe is an example of when I would put something in the journal to, uh, you know, brainstorm and figure out how to take something out. Hmm. But that's a that's a very specific example. Otherwise, because I do it so frequently, it's usually just a dump where I feel lighter, I feel clearer, and I feel like nothing's kind of in the way. Hmm. And I just leave it and I go do my thing. I, I had a guest one time, uh, 
named Dylan Johansson say to me that he used he had a had a desk job, office job, and then he he basically like rage quit that all and like mm-hmm. became a parkour gym. <laughs> and he said, "Don't do that." But he also said <laughs> he also said after he did it, before he really went all in on movement as his thing that he was going to pursue, he used to. Um, think about movement. So he would, if he wanted mm-hmm. to move, he had to first think about it. And then afterwards he realized that he was really, when he got all muddled up in his head, and sorry if I'm putting words in your mouth, Dylan, got all muddled up in his head, he would know that Dylan, not you. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. Would, he would say, I would then go out and move in order to figure out like how to think. So, so I used to have thoughts nice. in order to move. Now I have movement in order to think. And mm-hmm. it feels to me like you're doing some of that with the journal, but you're talking about like creating a negative space, emptying out your mind into the journal. And the follow on question that I want to ask is, mm-hmm. okay, well, once you've emptied your mind, then what are the things that you like to do? Do you, do you prefer to like go coach or teach or instruct with that empty mind space? Or do you want to just like run out the door and, and go physically move and play or like when you've sort of written to neutral or emptied to neutral, what then types of things call to you? Um, Good question. Uh, I think what it seems like is I'm just kind of reflecting on what I do uh, afterwards rather than, you know. Thank you. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It seems like what I do is that I just, um, I just go out and interact with people the way I would typically do it but i'm Mm. i have more energy i'm more engaging i'm more engaged um Mm. i can see things um to be more curious about them and interested in them um and i feel lighter and like i enjoy my time doing a thing more whether it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's coaching or whatever it's pumping gas um i still feel like i'm enjoying my my uh moment more because i'm not anxious i'm a very anxious person internally um i'm not as anxious or worried about stuff because i already mm. took care of it then mm. i can go you know i can just go act and i think that like carries me through my day i haven't always have an intention of course you have to set an intention you're going towards this direction in this direction mm. Right. Yeah. You're not just bumping off stuff all, you know, willy nilly. Well, that's, that's the goal. I don't know that I always yeah. succeed that, but that's, that's <laughs> the, I really should be intentional about what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, I want to talk about what you, what you do. I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about, uh, like I want to talk about 47 style first of all, but I also sure. want to talk about, um, when you take this mindset to the people that you work with, Mm-hmm. do you find that there are people that are like, Oh, these are the types of people that I click with and their mindset and my mindset connects even maybe though they're, they're very different, but they, there's something in you that resonates with them. So maybe let's unpack some of that, Craig, let's start with, tell me about, <laughs> <laughs> I'm notorious. I ramble, but I usually say, I promise I'll put a question mark somewhere. <laughs> um, tell me about 47 style and, and what you, what, like, what is that a vehicle for? What are you trying to do with it? Let's start there. Sure. Um, so 47 style, the name comes from, uh, this rapper named capital Steez and, um, he committed suicide a long time ago in the 2000s or early 2000s. Um, because he kind of went crazy, I think from taking too many drugs, um, but from being so hyper obsessed with this mm-hmm. number 47 and to him, 47 represented a balance of the heart and the mind amongst um, many of other, many other things but um it comes down to that balance uh four being the uh heart center seven being the mind center um and uh my brother introduced me to capital c's and um his hip-hop group um and the number 47 and uh we talked a bunch about it when we were going um, on a trip to maine one summer so that stood mm. out to me um style comes from my background in chinese kung fu and martial arts um when uh you learn some sort of uh kung fu form or some uh version of martial arts you call it something something style you mm-hmm. can call it tiger style praying mantis style uh something like that so um i saw it as an opportunity to create my own style um that uh 
could help people balance their hearts and their minds a little bit better. Mm. Um, and uh, the type of client I see, I, I've you know found myself you know um, just attracted to in one way or another. And I think vice versa. They're overachievers. They're high performers. They're people that push themselves. Uh, really far to one end of the spectrum. Um, de- Toward like the mind. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a, and they get stuck there. Um, and then they end up burning themselves out. They end up overworking. They end up resenting their jobs. They end up resenting this, that, the other thing. And then they take their bodies for granted and they abuse them. Um, so a lot of my work has been, of course, you know, um, giving people the opportunity to see the other end of the spectrum but also the place, all the gray area in between. The balance, the right? Correct. Um, and that's a lot of work um, emotionally and mentally as it is, you know, physically, um, is getting people to, you know, uh, let go of control a little bit. Um, yeah, in, in one sense, right, physical work is the easy work. Here, see this really heavy thing? Lift it. Well, I'm going to have to grunt and scream and it's going to hurt, but I know what that is. The late onset mm-hmm. muscle soreness, and three days later, I'm either injured or stronger. Like, the, the, there's a like a deception, you know, like a self-deception that can happen there. Like I feel like uh, I've, lately I've been making the joke about trying to QM to Valhalla, like quadrupedi movement in parkour or this one. And the idea of like, oh, if we just do this really sucky, suffering, horrible thing, then that in and of itself will take me to the great place. And that's mm-hmm. a vicious taskmaster. <laughs> that's the mind. You're, that's all mind, even though it feels physical, right? It's all the it's mind, all mind trying to control. Um, mm-hmm. So I think you make a great point there about like, okay, Craig, you need to come and take some sessions and we need to talk about what's the heart center, um, the yin-yang, what's the other balance or the counterbalance to that. Um, so I, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, there's there's the balance part, but there's also the part of it's not just I need to do more heart-centered work to balance myself. I also need to do less mind-centered work. It's not like Correct. I had 110% and I'm going to add yeah. 110% more. Um, so w- I was going to say, which of the kind of the cat out of the bag, but w- what do you think is the hardest part of the the message you're trying to share? What do you think is the hardest part for people to get You know, when they start working with you? That doing less is okay and it's still effective. Hmm. Um, specifically the the type of people I work with, they think um, that, you know, there's an identity attached to overdoing, overachieving and winning. <laughs> yeah. Dropping the bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they think that um, if they don't uh, perform the same way in their personal lives, that they're going to lose somehow or become less than somehow. Mm. Um, and there's a fear attached to it. Um, so it's helping them understand and educating them and ha- allowing them to experience that. Um, like you said, you don't have to go a hundred percent mentally and then a hundred percent physically. The balance isn't that the balance is finding somewhere in between where they both can kind of work together. Right. Um, one uh, of the things, one of the things that, um, this kind of aligns with what you're talking about, that Valhalla thing um, and the mental approach. Uh, one of the things that I use in my program um, is a thing that I call the low bar approach. Um, and it comes from this book called Exercised. Mm-hmm. Exercised um, past tense. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Um, exercised. And uh, Exercised was written by this guy named Daniel Lieberman, who's a Harvard, Harvard professor. He's a biological anthropologist and he talks about how exertion um, for human beings is optional and exercise is more or less a commodity that people are being sold Mm -hmm. and not necessarily something that they have to do so when people feel productivity guilt or guilty about not doing something it's not they're directly working against their biology. The biology, mm. our, all of our biology, according to Lieberman, says that we're designed to conserve energy and spend 10 to 12 hours wow, not geez. doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> so well, we I have enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have enough energy to go out and hunt yeah. or go out and do whatever we need to do. 
But the point he, he makes, though, is that we're not sedentary or the people weren't sedentary. They weren't lounging and sitting around doing nothing in an ergonomically designed chair at an ergonomically designed desk. The term he uses is that they were fidgeting. So they would lay weirdly. They would sit on a rock. They would squat. They would stand. They would do this. They would, you know, they would do all these different positions to keep mm. their bodies in a state of physical activity. So even though they're conserving energy, they're still moving around a little bit. And that's giving them the motility, the mobility, the all that types of all that type of stuff, all that practice in their body just by resting. Mm. So, so <laughs> yeah. So helping these people find balance and going like, oh, like that exists and that's an option and I can do that. And like, yeah, and you can see results. It's just a matter of learning the body to a degree. Like, so this is, this is part of what I was talking about earlier too, with um, starting to marry my uh, experience in martial arts and coming up with a way to communicate it through a brand. Um, the two martial arts that I study right now are Chinese Kung Fu and Judo. And Kung Fu and Judo both have this philosophy attached to them that helps you um, stay focused on an intention while performing one or the other. The term Kung Fu, it does not uh, directly uh, relate to what you see Jackie Chan do or Kung Fu Panda do. Kung Fu is a term that um, describes somebody giving something hard work and dedication over time. You can have good Kung Fu being a podcaster. You can have good Kung Fu being a umbrella salesman. You can have good Kung Fu being a martial artist, hmm. right? Judo has a philosophy that they follow call, uh, that is translated to uh, maximum efficiency, minimal effort. And when you watch Judo, I don't know if you've ever seen Judo before, the, I think yeah. it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the way people throw, the way people fall, what it happens in the transition as somebody's falling. And when you watch a really good judoka perform, they barely move. They just get out of the way and stick something in the way. Mm -hmm. And physics does all the work. But it's one of the hardest things to do. And you have to be so skilled and so good and technical at what you're doing that it ends up looking that way <laughs> there's a there's a phrase about that like you know the hardest stuff that looks easy it only looks easy because of all the effort that went into it like taking everything Correct. away is the really hard part uh, hmm. it's like um like paul mccartney's one of my favorite musicians you listen to all paul mccartney songs they're so simple and you can sing along and follow along to every single one of them but once you start looking into how complex his arrangements are and like his mm. chord progressions are you're like holy cow man like they, <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics is the only easy part right <laughs> yeah it gets in there but like that simplicity just comes from repetition and from doing it over and over and over again so back to um you know trying to relate to my my uh customer or relate to the my type of client it's communicating to them that um your movement practice, what I help people design on movement practices, your movement practice can be um, maximally efficient and minimally uh, with minimal effort, as mm -hmm. long as you put the work in and the discipline up front, which Kung Fu represents. So that's what I help people do. It's, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes complete sense. There's a <laughs> there's a problem that human beings have, which is how do I not say anything <laughs> after you say something that's profound? I call it the problem of the profound silence. Yeah, I think you you connect a, a number of uh, really interesting and insightful points about you know what 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 are those two martial arts in particular trying to share from their roots, um, but how that is really woven into what you're trying to do. Um, when you're creating 47 style and what you're trying to share with other people. I think that's Correct. Um, effort, effort well spent on your part, effort well spent, you know, when you try to help other people with it. And uh, I think a really interesting way to put it together. Thanks. Um, what else is on your mind in our 
elapsing moments. Um, how much time do we have left? Well, uh, yeah, we got lots of time. Uh, just right. sometimes there's something. <laughs> I, I always I, I try to leave a space for that because sometimes there's something that's like second in people's minds, and they've been talking and they just spent a bunch of brain energy like telling me some big long thing, mm -hmm. and then I, I want to leave a moment because sometimes there's something right behind it. And if I just start talking, you don't get to it. So that's why I'm like, is there anything else on your mind? Um, yeah. Right now, no. Um, I'm exploring, like, I'm interested in hearing, uh, you know, just everybody's uh, perspective, experience, or opinion on this. Like, I am, like I said, I'm not, my background is not in fitness. My background is not in working out. Um, mm. I do it now because I see the value in it, but that's not where I came from. Um, so when people tell me things like, oh, I've been doing this for so long, I see it as a brand new thing. And I'm, I, I'm not, um, aware of like, you know, it's, it's lifespan, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I'm very curious to, uh, learn more about how people, um, uh, develop movement practices if they have movement practices, um, and what they look like. Mm -hmm. I'm smiling and chuckling because, well, after this, I'll give you a crash course on how to be a podcaster. <laughs> you, can start, <laughs> you can start randomly as people, hey, you want to jump on my podcast? And then you can ask them those very questions. Um, there's a couple of fun ways to go about digging into that. You can do like the anthropology approach where, you know, you, you do like, I have a camera and I don't want to just I'm gonna record and don't interact at all. And then it can be really interesting to have particular through lines that you want to follow and like mm -hmm. always go and investigate, you know, a constellation of ideas that are, that are your, these are my touch points and then ask and maybe different language each time or the same language, but ask different people the same thing. Like, well, what, a, what about uh, open versus closed chains, you know, and you could just explore the same theme with multiple people and, my experience is, imagine this, people are complex. Every time I have a conversation with anybody, I come away with more questions and Same. more ideas that like it, things don't get simpler. They just get more and more complex as I talk Same. to people. So I agree with yeah, that. Go, go start a podcast. I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. The hard part is, is the hardest part is doing the guest outreach to be completely candid. The hard part is, you know, working with people to get the scheduling and get people to be able to make time and get them to be comfortable enough to do it. Um, but you'd probably find that all the people in your mind that like, I wonder what they would say about you probably could get to them pretty easily. <clears throat> cool. 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 Uh, I'm like, just we're at like 23 minutes here. So I think I will just say, and of course the final question, three words to describe your practice. Three words to describe my practice right now, this day, this hour, and this week, I will say the minimal effective dose I'm scribbling frantically, but minimum effective dose is a deep concept that everybody's heard of it. But when you start to think about that, like what's the minimum effective dose for movement? What's the minimum effective dose for journaling? So cool. Great words. Um, Alex, it was a pleasure to meet you to get a chance to chit chat. Uh, I think we should get together and do one of these in person and maybe train a little too. <laughs> I would love that. It'd be great. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you.